Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today, I have a special one for you. We are here in Substance Painter 2, newly released from Algorithmic, and they've done a fantastic job. And actually, just a few hours before this recording, the $99 price actually dropped to $75. Uh, been a huge uh, outcry from the community that, you know, $100 was a lot to ask for this software. I personally don't agree. I don't agree with everyone who's been... I hate to use the word complaining, but that's what it looks like, saying it's not fair, I'm on a budget. You know what, I'm on a budget too. But uh, some things are worth the wait, they're worth working for. So don't whine so much as plan. And that would be my soapbox on that. Now on to the awesomeness that is this software. Lots of changes from Substance Painter 173, 172, 173. This is mostly the same beast, but there's a couple things I wanted to highlight. Okay, so first on my list of things that I wanted to highlight is the layout. The layout is much better, I believe. This is the standard layout. I haven't touched it at all. And as you can see, things are organized a little differently. If you look down here and around here, things are moved around a bit, but that's okay. I really like the way it's working here. We've now got uh, viewer settings versus display settings. And I think of viewer settings as more of my, as I'm working, and then my display settings are more of I'm finished here and I want to show you, you know, what I've f finally done, you know, get it prepped for a render. Now one of the things that has thrown me off a little bit, but it's okay, is uh, as I'm used to entering numbers in here for things like my dirt layer here that I've applied, I'm used to typing a number in here and then hitting tab to tab out of the field. But if you do that now, you'll notice that there's a new feature. If you hit tab, it will jump to a kind of full screen display here. So if you're just painting on the model here, you can get a better close up view. It shows you your texture and your model here. And if I hit tab, I go back to the interface. So that is a change and it's thrown me off a little bit with these numbers. I have to get used to entering a number and then I just click somewhere else to kind of get it to jump. But it's a good change because the tab is so handy. When I'm all done and I'm ready to take a render, like a screen cap to you know throw on Facebook or something to share with people, I'll hit tab and then I'll just kind of drag this over a bit and I'll center my model here like so. And I'll just take a print screen and you know crop it out and do my thing. So that's really, uh, really helped in making that process a lot easier. There is also, I wanted to mention related to screen capping, there is a new ability to create plugins. You can see right here my button doesn't do anything yet. Oh, maybe you can't see the button here. Doesn't do anything yet, but there is a plugins uh, uh, API in the background. And I'm going to be learning that, and we're going to be developing our own plugins here for uh, SP2. And what I'm going to do is generate a button that will automatically do the tab feature, but then it will also kind of shrink this to nothing, even hide it if possible. And that way we can have a maximum screen resolution in order to show off our beautiful models. Next on my list of things I wanted to share with you is the drag and drop to import uh, assets here. So one of the things that we do frequently is we'll have a model here and I want to put like a stamp of a company logo or something on here. And it used to be, I would go file, import resource, you know, find it, and it would be in here. So you can see some of the ones that I've imported already. And uh, let me find a good one there. Something like this, here's a curvature map, you know, something like that will come in and I'll have to click it and say reload. Well, now it's so much easier. I, I can actually point, you won't be able to see this, but I'm pointing off screen and I'm going to take an image and drag and drop it directly into here. Now, what's really cool about this is you get a couple of options. The first option is to import for this current session only. That's really cool. If it's just something you want to use one time. Uh, import into this project. This project happens to be called SP2 Review, so that's what it is. Uh, but I could import it only for this project, or I could, if it's something super handy that I'm going to use all the time across multiple projects, I have here import to shelf, and that will put it in this texture shelf. That's really, really handy. Of course, I can just cancel because I don't want to do that right now. But it's super handy, and I used it on another project, and it took less than 10 minutes to paint the whole thing. It was absolutely amazing. Speaking of these resources here, if I scroll through the textures here, you can see these all these cool tech shapes we have now, and they look like they're normal map colors, and that's because these are normal map details that you can put directly onto the mesh. It's really awesome, 
and there's over 400 of them in this list here. It's amazing. I've already used several of them. They're awesome. Actually, I noticed that some of them were from a Gumroad artist. I found some of his stuff and I purchased them from him. And I've noticed a lot of his stuff is in here. Like I definitely know that's one of his. So I think they made a deal with him or purchased the rights to use them from him, which is fine by me. I, I just have double duty of it now, but uh, it's nice to know is on the right track, <laughs> hunting those things down. So the, yeah, there's over 400 textures in here. Uh, some all new alphas. Uh, the procedurals I think are the standard ones from the um, substance family. Uh, the generators are new. We have an all new mask building capability. We'll be going over all the new features, guys. Don't you worry. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of new stuff to play with here, and it's really great that we have such a rich library to start with. And including over here, we have all kinds of new smart materials, all new materials, and I'm still working on importing my other materials, but you import the materials the same way. You just drag and drop and drop them in here. Really great stuff. Next, I want to talk about just in general, the stability has been awesome. Uh, I do have an ongoing issue with my graphics card, completely unrelated to any of the Substance softwares. So it's not their fault at all. Uh, it's my NVIDIA card and the way that the drivers have been installed. But uh, overall stability of this has been awesome. I have had some crashes, but again, that's related to the NVIDIA. Uh, in general, I'm able to get uh, 8 or 10 operations deep before it starts to, you know, have uh, a crash due to, due to NVIDIA pops up and tells me, hey, I crashed and everything crashes out. But it's really good about saving. If I hit save, it's nice and quick. It's already saved. There you go. And so it's not hard at all to bounce back from NVIDIA, you know, causing me issues. Uh, so overall, really great stability and all the demos I've been watching and all the different people working with it, they've been telling me it's super stable. It's doing a great job. And uh, we're really happy with that. And finally, as I'm sure you know, we have all new tools. Uh, the biggest here is the uh, the blur tool. We have uh, the ability to blur. We have uh, the ability to clone, and we'll be going over all of that. Uh, let me see, is it up here? No, it's seven tree. There's a clone up here somewhere. Smudge, yeah, smudge is great. So we'll be going over all of the new tools. Don't you worry. Uh, having tutorials on them, little tips and tricks, and things that I find as we go. But uh, these new tools are definitely worth the price tag, as I mentioned earlier. I think that it's completely fair that we've been asked to pay for this new software because it is a whole new um, iteration. You know, we went from 173 all the way up to 20. So I think it's completely fair. It's awesome. I've been using it frequently, and it's so easy to just bang out awesome assets, and they look photorealistic, and I can paint and get amazing detail, and it's so easy. Even I can now rotate the uh, alphas for different things. And it's so great. I can put things exactly where I want them to be, and that's what I want from a piece of software. And I think that uh, as as an artist, as I create things, you know, I want to be paid for my work. So I don't think it's unfair at all for uh, the guys and gals over at uh, Algorithmic. They work really hard, and they should be paid for their work too. And so I think it's definitely fair that we we pay them for their hard work and all the new tools and all the new features and all the new textures in here that we have to use at our disposal. They've just made it really easy for us. It's a one-stop shop. So definitely I think that's completely fair and it's awesome. So uh, that's my review, guys. Um, if you have the means and you are interested, I definitely recommend picking it up. Uh, all of my tutorials going forward from here will be about SP2 and not the legacy SP. So uh, I will still, some things will still be transferable, of course. And I will be doing a live stream next week and uh, we'll be using this exclusively to do all of our texture painting. So, as always guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.